Hello, Glowforge users and other laser users. This is Inkscape for Glowforge users, but this isn't just specifically for Glowforge. I think that these are great tutorials for any Inkscape user that would be using a laser. So um, today we're going to go over some of the very basics of Inkscape. So if you feel pretty confident with Inkscape already, this may not be the video for you. Um, but I love, love, love having you in this group because um, it will be so valuable for you to answer all of these different, like help answer questions and help mentor other users with regards to Inkscape. Um, a few things about Inkscape is if you're not sure what Inkscape is, Inkscape is a vector graphics software. It provides and produces SVGs, which are really great for using on the Glowforge or using on like a Cricut or a Silhouette machine. Um, so... Inkscape is free, which I love because a lot of people think you need Illustrator to do all these really cool designs, and you don't. You can use Inkscape, which is what I use pretty much exclusively, and I've gotten decently good at understanding what Inkscape is. So if you are interested in getting a Glowforge and want to learn some design things, this could be for you. If you purchase a lot of your files and you want to learn how to make your own, this can be for you. Um, or if you just want to freshen up on some of your skills and maybe learn a little thing or two here and there, this also could be for you. So we're going to be doing tutorials at least twice a week for the entire summer. Um, but always feel free to add, answer, ask or answer any questions in the um, Glowforge group because I really want to um, make this a good dialogue for everyone. If you are interested in purchasing a Glowforge, I do have my code listed in the description. Um, but if someone else helps you in this group, please reach out to them and ask for their code as well, because that would be a great way to really kind of help the people that have helped you. Okay. So um, let's go through some of the basics of Inkscape. So if you download, you can actually go to inkscape.org. I believe that's what it is. And you can download it for free, super easy, usually pretty quick. Um, let's go through some of the basics of Inkscape though. You have your file up here, edit, view, layer. I haven't used layering too much, but we'll go through that somewhat. Um, that's one of the big features in Adobe Illustrator because I've used that a little bit, but I definitely know Inkscape better. Um, object, this is something I use a lot, but path is the thing that I seem to use the most. So we'll go through, and in these videos, we're going to be talking about some popular projects that people do make with Inkscape and how to make them yourself too. Um, we have text and filters and all of these other things. Extensions we will get to as well, because this is an extension you can make to make laser cut boxes. And if you've ever seen like living hinges, you can make those in Inkscape as well, which is awesome. So, um, but today's, we're just gonna get started with some basics. So this is the icon, the little pointer key right here that you're always gonna wanna come back to. So you're gonna click some of these other things. So let's say you click the box and you make a box, awesome. But you can't just go and click something else because you'll make another box. So you'll always wanna go back to your pointer and that way you can actually click and manipulate that in some way and move it and things like that, okay? So we'll get rid of the box. Um, obviously you can create a circle and these are typically filled, but I've turned off my fill. So you can fill it in different colors that could be useful for other different reasons. Uh, we have other shapes that you can create. So I've already kind of preset that one for a different project. We have 3D shapes that are fun to kind of create for different things spirals. This could be a cool design and you can say how many loops and turns and all of those other things that you want to create. Um, this is also something that might be fun to create um, bowls, which we'll get to in a different day as well. So then we have, you can create straight lines or all of these other things if you're not really super confident about your line making skills. And again, always come back to this if you want to manipulate that in any way. Pencil. Pencil is like when you basically would draw freehand. Now that does actually look, these two look better than what I actually just drew for you because of the smoothing feature, which I will talk about a little bit later in a different video with you guys. So we'll get rid of these. <sighs> Sorry, my computer, I just got it. So it's been updating a lot. Then we have our calligraphy feature. And again, if you have a touch screen, this is even better. I would use the fill on this but it's kind of cool because it has the different gradients and things like that. But today, what we are going to focus on is text. 
So a lot of times people want to use text in Glowforge, but I'll show you guys the common misunderstanding for using text in Glowforge. So we'll just set it to any of these texts. And one of the other things that's super cool is you can actually download text onto your Inkscape, which again, we'll go over in a different video. So all those super cool fonts that you see, we'll go through two websites that you can find those fonts with. But let's just go with a basic Arial for now. And I'm going to type my name normally. So typically you would think, oh, okay, my name, cool. Resize it. So a few things with resizing before we talk about a common misunderstanding is you would probably think, hey, I'll use this corner, I'll pull it out and it'll just resize it properly, right? Well, as you can see, I tried and my name already got distorted. So control Z makes it go back. But so if you want to drag out the corner and you don't want it to get distorted, hold down the control key, click your mouse and drag. And then you can actually change it without it distorting the shape. So even if you like it like this and you want it to become bigger in that way, hold down the control key. Okay. So let's say I'm satisfied with that. Oh, before we get to that too, if you click the first time, it'll show you all those different areas going out. If you click the second time, it'll show you arrows going horizontally and then a little loop right here. That means that you can actually rotate it in this way, which is pretty fun. So however, okay, so let's say that's the way that I would want my design, perfect. You would typically think, okay, hit save as, awesome. I'll do wrinkle two, cool. And then you would think, hey, let's go into the Glowforge app. And then in the Glowforge app, if you're not familiar with this, go to the plus, hit the upload, find your design and you would open. However, something we didn't do with this, you can see, doesn't have any printable elements. This has text, it's been removed, which is really frustrating. When I first did this, I was very, very frustrated because I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't have text? You're supposed to be able to do text in Glowforge. So let's go back and we'll fix this text so you can actually use it in the Glowforge software. So the biggest thing here, and I love this feature, is path, and then you hit object to path. You will use this with a lot of different things. Now, something that I always do to check and make sure that it actually did what I wanted it to do is the second one under the icon clicker. We have the second one, and you can hover over these, and you will see it highlights it in red, and you'll actually see it highlights it in dots if you click on them directly, which is great. Now, as you can see, my letters are all individual right now, which could be fine, but if I want this to really stay as one unit, especially when you're resizing, something you wanna do is you wanna group them. And if you wanna select all, you can either hit Control A, or you can just, what I always do is I just click and drag a box and then it highlights everything that I clicked and dragged the box over. So what you wanna do now is you wanna to go to path and then you wanna hit combine. And then again, we'll go to this and you can see all of these are now in one, which is pretty cool. So again, I'll hit file and I'll just hit save this time. And that's Rachel two. We'll go into Glowforge this time We'll hit upload, Rachel 2, and let's see if it actually works this time. Processing, and there we go. And now that you have this design, you can resize it in Glowforge, you can do all these other things in Glowforge, and we can go through the Glowforge interface if people have questions about that, um, but it can engrave, it can cut, and it can score. So now it has the ability to do all of these things that it did not have the ability to do before because of the fact that you used this particular trick in Inkscape. So I hope that that video was helpful to you guys. Um, I know that some of you guys might be bored by this, but for me personally, when I was first starting out, I struggled with this for weeks. And so I just didn't want people to have that same experience where you are kind of struggling um, so if you have any questions about this particular tutorial, let me know. I will be creating others for other types of um, ideas and projects and things like that. So I'll probably do a few more basic videos and then we'll get into some specific projects that you can do that will have even better features. All right. Thank you, everyone. And invite anybody else to the group that you think that might be benefiting from this particular group. Thank you.